Hi Floss Tube. Welcome back. It's Kara, the Granite State Stitcher, both here on YouTube and on Instagram. Email is granitestatestitchers at gmail.com. That information will all be linked below. So welcome back if you are a returning subscriber. And if you are new, thanks so much for stopping in. I hope you like what you see and you consider subscribing and um, hanging out with us. So it's another gloomy day here in New Hampshire. It's been raining for the past three days and it's supposed to rain tomorrow and then be in the 30s on Sunday. So another good weekend, I guess, to just stay inside and stitch. So today we're doing a whip parade. Um, I just wanted to mention if you are new, go back and check out floss tube number nine, my previous floss tube to this this one and you will um there's a giveaway i had reached 100 subscribers so if you would like details about that giveaway and you want to enter go ahead and watch that video and the details will be there so i would say that i probably have an average number of whips i've been ooh, that bird almost crashed in my window I've been watching whip parades, as I'm sure you all have been, and you know I there are some that are close to a hundred or even over a hundred, and there are some that maybe are just a handful, you know, because those stitchers don't like having a lot of whips, and obviously it's personal preference. It's you know what you are comfortable with in your stitching world. Um, I never would have had all these whips in the past, but now I definitely have become a process stitcher. I love starting a project. I love working on a project and it doesn't matter to me, you know, if I'm in a rush to finish it up. There are some that you will see that I am going to plan on finishing up. That will be, I am going to do a 2024 plan video. So that will be in my, the next video coming up. But um, so anyway, I would say I have an average number and um, I have piles around me. So hopefully they won't fall down during the middle of this. And, you know, I'll, I'll apologize right now, guys. Some of these whips are pitiful, you know, barely any start to them. Um, I definitely have to put together a better process and a better schedule of an allotment of time to work on um, stitching upcoming in 2024. And I think that I'm planning on having a rotation. So I think that will really help. But some of these, I mean, I have everything. I keep track, you know, of everything that I'm working on. You know, I have my little calendar here and I write in all my projects and you know what's going on with them and some of these I haven't worked on them in so long I had to go find them you know how sad is that that I had to go hunting for one of my cross stitch projects uh, cross stitch projects but again like I said hopefully they'll change in 2024 okay so pull up a chair Grab your favorite beverage. Today it's Dunkin' Donuts for me. And let's get started. And I have five dogs here today. I'm babysitting my son's dog, so the grand dog is here. Right now they're all sleeping on the floor around me. So hopefully that will stay the same and um, they don't start barking in the middle of this. Okay. So let's start with my oldest whips. Um, for those of you who are new and may not know the story behind these, the first one is a Leisure Arts. This is from 1991. I believe the pattern came out in 89, but I started it in 91. And it's this pattern right here. typical 80s colors, right? And I had started this for my cousin because he was getting married. His wedding was July 
1992. So I had started this in November or December of 91. And for whatever reason, I never got it done. I never ended up giving it to him. He never received it. And now it is, what, how many years later? 30 years later, 32. And he has since, his kids are graduated from college. He has since been divorced. Um, and I still have this. So my son just got married in October. And I decided, well, you know something, I'll finish this up for him. Well, notice that I said he got married in October and I still have the cross stitch. <laughs> it's not done yet. So, whoops, there's a bunch of thread. So I really need, this is going to be the first one I finish up in 2024. He's even asked me, um, so when are we getting our wedding gift? Mm, you'll get it. <laughs> so anyway, here it is. United in love. I only have the outside border done. As you recall, I had to finish up doing um, this year. I worked on finishing up the hearts around the border. And this is just done. It was a kit. So this is just done on the Ada that was in the kit, I believe. I don't think. Well, no, I take that back. This wasn't a kit. Um, it was just the leaflet. So, and of course, stupid me. Um, do you see that? What, do you see that margin? This is going to have to be, I think I'm probably going to have to mount this on a sticky board or probably spray the sticky glue around the edges and then mount this on a mat board to frame it. Um, because obviously it's not going to be able to be laced. It's not enough, not enough border there, but, um, this Ada, whatever it is from way back when, is so soft and easy to work with. But I am changing the colors up on this. I'm getting rid of the pinks and the seafoam greens and his col their colors for their wedding. The um, bridal party, the bridesmaids wore burgundy dresses and the groomsmen were in black tuxes. So I'm changing the writing. All the writing will be in black and these hearts I'm actually going to fill in with the burgundy um, because I think the black will be very stark and these may get lost in that. Um, so I'm going to just to add some more depth and the color to the burgundy, I'm going to fill all these hearts in, have the black writing. And then I think I'm going to, um, there are other hearts and other doves. And I think I'm just going to add like some seed pearls and um, maybe a few ribbons, maybe a charm, you know, just to kind of spruce it up, try to make it not look so 80s. So anyway, that is my oldest whip. Um, and hopefully my first finish for 2024. Then my second oldest whip is my New England sampler in my trash bag. These were our project bags back in the day, folks. You had to make do with whatever you had. Okay. So... This is from 1995. And I'll just show that to you. Now, let me um, give you the pattern. I'll show you the pattern, I should say. This is from Ginger and Spice, New England Sampler. And if you watch just keep stitching. Pam stitched this back in the 90s, and she has it hanging on the wall in her house. And I absolutely love it. Um, this was originally stitched, being stitched as a gift for a friend. And again, never finished it. Have no idea what that person is now. So I'll actually keep this one. This will be one that I keep for myself. So this year I did add in 
um, this yellow lettering down here. Now, sorry, I'm talking through it. I had left this open because I, I have no idea when I'll finish it. And of course, I thought this was funny. 1995 to 20, 2000, whatever. But um, I am going to put a four in there because I think if I put the four in there, it will force me to work on this and get it done. If I leave that open, then I will just procrastinate even more to finishing this. So this is definitely on my radar to get done. Um, again, I don't know. It was whatever the called for. This is Ada. It looks like it's 18 count Ada and then the call for DMCs. Um, and I still had to figure out, if you notice, the age spots along the bottom here. I think some of these will be covered up. There is a row of um, flower pattern that goes across there. But um, I don't know. I think this has been on this scroll frame for so long that I think that when it's finished and I take this off that I will wash it. I don't usually wash my patterns, um, but this one I think will need it. And I will try putting just a little bit of oxy rub on those spots. And I'll wash this in um, Dawn and with vinegar, you know, so hopefully nothing runs. Um, keep my fingers crossed on that. So that is the New England sampler. And I love that. Okay, so new whips. Those are my old whips. These are my new whips. Um, so this is, oh, hold on, let me turn my page. Let me get to my details. This is the dog sampler by Imaginating Ink. And this is so cute. I started this right after tax season in um, April. And see if I can get that without the glare. It's just cute, just a bunch of little dogs on a sampler. Very easy. It's being stitched on 18 count antique white Ada um, with all DMC. Okay. My little dog is a, and here we go. All I have done is one little Scotty dog. <laughs> now, this is, and I don't know if it's because the Ada that I was using, oops, I mean the DMC that I was using was so old or what, but see, I had started I don't know if you can see that. You see that little, that very faint purple? I had actually started this flower right here over too far. So I pulled it out and I put it in the right spot, but it actually stained the fabric. And I'm going to try brushing using one of the brushes to see if I can brush some more of that out. But I probably won't do anything about it. I'll probably just leave it there if I can't get it out. Um, but like, how weird was that? But anyway, that's dog sampler. Oh, and I'd actually had to redo his little jacket. I don't know why, but I stitched all these squares in black instead of red, not paying attention, obviously. Uh, sometimes my brain doesn't function correctly. It's a dog sampler. Okay, the second one is Welcome to the Lake by Hinsight. Hinsight, sorry, Hinsight. That's the correct way to say it. And I love this. And 
this is very, must be sticking to my needle minder. Um, and this is being stitched on 28 count Jobelin mushroom. And you know, inside patterns are very easy to stitch. So again, I don't know why I haven't worked on this, but that's all I've gotten done. Just the beginning of the W. I should take this. I'm actually going up to Maine this weekend and I will be in a cabin on a lake. So I should take this with me. You know, I'll have the view of the lake and I can stitch, but I do have my New Year's Day stitches that I'm taking. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I probably have to take work with me too. All right, so that's in Welcome to the Lake. Get in there. They're just being thrown. <laughs> I have a box over there. I'm just throwing them in. Okay, the next one is... Oh, not this one. Okay, so the next one is my Thanksgiving sampler. Now I had started this for um, Sherry, the Colorado Cross Stitcher does summer camp for June, July, and August of every year. So this was actually started for the June summer camp. The requirement was to stitch something with a bird on it. So I figured, okay, I'll get started for Thanksgiving. Um, because it has this big old turkey right there, which I think is an awesome looking turkey. So this is Thanksgiving 1621 Sampler by Twin Peaks Primitive. I love Twin Peaks. They're so easy to so you know, easy to work with. Their patterns are, are fabulous. Um, and this is being stitched on 14 count Ada Vintage Country Mocha. And as you recall, the last time, oops, needle, needle minder sticking everywhere here. Um, oh, there's a thread hanging there. Oh, well. Okay. So this is where I am with this. And it just dawned on me. I'm probably not going to be picking this up for a while. I should probably take it off this hoop, right? Anyway, okay. So the last time I had talked to you about this one, um, because I was working on this in November, and I finished the turkey, and then these pumpkins. Now, look at these pumpkins. Look at how close, how similar in color they are. I guess when they're up close, you can see the differentiation between the colors, but I think I'm going to just take a light gray and maybe do a back stitch here to separate these two pumpkins to show more definition. And then it's these same colors for two more pumpkins over here. So I did decide to change up the colors. I'm going to go with a darker orange for the one in the back that goes over here. And then I will use this orange for the one in the front. Um, and then there's a vine that separates them. So I think that will look better. Um, but yeah, I just didn't like how close, how close in color those oranges were for those pumpkins. So um, I will be switching those up, those colors, those oranges. So this... This I'll pull out and work on during the year next year. It, it It is a fast stitch. I just needed to put more time into it this year, and I didn't. Okay. Then the next one, oop, that one, is My Home Sweet Home. Now, this was done as a sal with Cornhusker State Stitchers. This was a pattern 
um, done by Sweet Wing Studio, and you downloaded it as a PDF. And this was um, a specialty pattern just for Heartland quilts. That is Terry and Jamie's um, Etsy shop. So um, I started this as the stitch along with Terry and Jamie, and I don't think any of us finished it, to be honest. I haven't seen them post anything. Um, maybe Terry did, I'm not sure, but uh, okay. So again, I didn't get very far on this. I was actually stitching this when I was out in Oklahoma this summer, babysitting my granddaughter. So I basically, I just got the flagpole and the beginning of the flag. So I really need to get back to this one. Um, again, it's not a difficult stitch. This is actually, this is being stitched on 32 count apparition by Color and Cotton. And this was the first piece I've ever stitched on linen. Because usually I always stitched everything on Ada. So this was my first stitch on linen. Um, and this was for July boot camp for Colorado Cross Stitcher. Um, the requirement was to stitch something that grows, and the pattern had all these sunflowers on it. So that's what I did for the July boot camp. Okay, next one is Letters from Nora. This was a series that Nora Corbett from Mirabilia um, put out, and it's alphabetized letters for little fairies. And I started this for my granddaughter, Allie. And I showed this in my very first floss tube, I think, with Allie in it. Um, oh, sorry about the glare, guys. There you go. And that fairy is just so sweet. Um, so I really want to get this one finished up because um, I told you in my last video, my daughter got transferred to off at Air Force Base, which is right outside of Omaha. And Allie has picked out her room and the new, they bought a house um, because she's gonna be there for at least five years, they've told her. So her other bases, like she's moved three times in two years. So her other base assignments were just temporary while she was training. Uh, but they've told her that she will definitely be here for five years, so they bought a house and Allie's so excited because she picked out her room and she'll get to, you know, actually decorate it the way that she wants. So I want to get this finished so I can get it to Allie and get it. Um, she can have it for her room. So this is being stitched on 32 count water lily by Witchelt. And that's how much I have done. Just the top part of the A with the top part of the fairy started. And again, I should have had more done on this. It's almost like, because I was stitching this out in Oklahoma too, so it's almost like I came back from Oklahoma and then never touched these again. But they'll definitely get some love in 2024. Okay, so now the next one is Hello Pumpkin by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. And this was for the Colorado Cross Stitchers August boot camp. Um, 
which was the requirement was to start something new to you, whether it was stitch something on a new fabric, maybe try a new designer, um, you know, a new finish type, like a drum or something. So um, I had never stitched Caterpillar cross stitch. And here is Hello Pumpkin, that's the pattern. And I had seen um, Aaron, the two martini stitcher do this. And I loved it. It's so cute. And I'll give this to Allie too when it's done. Um, but she has a whole series. She has one. This is the fall series. She has one for winter. Hello winter. And it has a little deer on it. And the tree is a Christmas tree with presents. And then she has hello spring and hello summer. Um, I haven't gotten any of those other ones. But I might check them out. I know that the hello deer one is very, very pretty. The one for winter. And I'm sure that the other ones are too. Um, so this is another one that I enjoy stitching on. So I don't know why I haven't gotten more done on this. This is being stitched on 16 count white Ada. It actually came as a kit. So fabric and floss is included. And that's where I got on that one. And what I like about this now, when you think of fall colors, obviously the oranges and the deep golds and the browns and, you know, maybe um, some purples thrown in there, but she really changes it up with her color pattern on this. Because if you notice, you know, she's bringing in teals and reds and deep purples. Um, I mean, look at this right here is teal grass and there's teal throughout the tree and reds and purples. It was so pretty when Aaron got this finish because it was just different colors for autumn. Um, so this will be very cute when it's when it's all done. And I really like that color palette. Okay, uh, number eight. Oh, all right. So this was my birthday start this year, and a forest grew. I think I've only seen this is such a. I think I've only seen um two other stitchers stitches. I'm sure there's more, but I know that. Erin was working on this. I don't know if she finished. And maybe that Lauren, the New Hampshire stitcher, I know that she did a Savior's Praise. Um, hmm. Maybe Teresa, the kitten stitcher, did this? I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, here's the pattern. I know that there was a sal for this and uh, the sal was called all the friggin trees. <laughs> Hashtag all the friggin trees. And I'll tell you something. You don't know how many different this is being stitched on 36 count Edinburgh linen antique white with all DMC. OK, so there's 103 colors to this pattern. And they're trees, folks. So all the colors are browns and greens. And you don't know how many different shades of green there are in the DMC spectrum until you stitch this pattern. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, but anyway, again, not much done on this one. And I love this. So this will be pulled out again, actually next week on the 4th. I do pull this out on the 4th of each month to try to put something in it. Otherwise, it's never, it, it's going to take a long time to finish anyway. But at least if I am working on it one day a month, um, 
it, it is getting some attention. So here we go. I think I just finished up that bird the last time I showed this to you. Um, so maybe if I get a regular rotation down for 2024, which is what I'm shooting, you know, which is what I'm hoping to do, you know, maybe on days that I don't have certain patterns assigned to, I can actually pull this out, you know, more than just one time during the month. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Otherwise, I will just still keep plugging away at it on the fourth of the month. Okay, so the next one is Patriotic Mantle by Bent Creek. And here's the finished pattern. This one I'm going to do and give to my son because he does have a fireplace in his new house. Um, and this is being stitched on 18 count raw linen with the pearl cottons, which when I first started this, I wasn't sure whether or not I liked the pearl cottons. So I started it, pulled them out, stitched with regular DMC, didn't like how those looked, pulled that out, and went back to the pearl cotton. So I'm happy with the pearl cotton. Um, again, I don't have very much started. I'm not even sure where I am on this. Oh, it'd help if I turned it the right side out. <laughs> no wonder I'm looking at, no, that's the right side. Oh my gosh. Get it together, Kara. Oh, all right. So <laughs> I couldn't figure which way it went. Okay, here we go. Um, I started up here with the star, top of the Liberty Bell going down and then the red. So I think I wanted to make sure that I had enough because I had actually started this going the wrong way. I do that quite often. I don't know why I'm just not paying attention when I make the first stitches in my fabric. Um, but I wanted to go down to make sure that I was going to have enough space at the bottom because I had started this in the wrong spot and I don't, I obviously didn't leave enough room at the top. So that will be a little tight, but such is my story. So that is Patriotic Mantle. And sorry, guys, I do need to put these back into their bags. Otherwise, I'll just get, I mean, you should see the piles around me and I don't want to get any more messed up than I already am. Okay, the next one is Baby Garden by Just Nan. And this is being done on 28 count natural linen, raw cashel. So there is the pattern. And again, I like just Nan patterns, but so many specialty stitches in them. They have the little charms that come with them. Um, so it, all the specialty stitches make for, oh my gosh. So this is one of those pathetic starts. Oh my gosh, really? 
I'm embarrassed to even show this to you. That's it. Just that little square. Why do I only have that much done? And this one was actually started for arbitrary August when I did the um, whip wheel. Oh, I think. Oh, I was going into some specialty stitches that went around the outline of that box. And I probably just didn't feel like doing them at that particular moment. So that one will definitely have to be pulled out this year to get some more stitching done on that. Oh gosh, Patriotic Mantle was also started for Arbitrary August. Okay. Um, next we have Patriotic Quilt. Also started for Arbitrary August. This is by Rosewood Manor. I love Rosewood Manor. This is by my third Rosewood Manor. Pattern. So this obviously is gonna take some time. All these, I don't know if you can see it. There you go. All the names of the states being stitched in there. Is there are names of the people, the Declaration of Independence, too. Yeah, actually, I think these are all the names of the people. Oh, okay. These are all the names in here. These are all the names of the people that signed the Declaration of Independence, and the state initials are in all the stars going along the outside border all the state abbreviations so i already remember that this is another pathetic start so blah. i think i only have one star done and this is being stitched on 32 count parchment by Weeks Dye Works. Oh, and I have a hanging thread. Sorry. Um, get up there. And that's where I am on that. Just this little star. This is a close up of it. And all these stars get back stitched. Yay. <laughs> oh, another one that definitely needs needs a lot of time put into it this year. All right. So that's patriotic quilt. And then we have another Just Nan, Winter Haven. I started this for Arbitrary August and then um, had it pulled out again for 25 Days of Christmas since it was a winter pattern. So you have seen this relatively recently. And... There's the pattern for that. And again, a ton of specialty stitches, specialty threads, has little charms, but it's so cute. It's so adorable. And so for this, Oh yeah, because I did not have the cry neck that I needed to finish this one, this first motif. Um, 
This is being stitched on 28 count flax. And this is the first motif up in the corner. And I had to order, it was a white sparkly crinic that's supposed to go in these spaces around. And then that first motif will be done. Um, but that's a lot of stitches for that one little motif. I mean, look at that. A lot of stitches. Sorry, that was out of. So this is definitely going to be a very intricate um, one to stitch. And so is Baby Garden. So I, I have a feeling that I, when I Ooh. stitch these, I'm going to have to be in the mood to work on them because they're going to require my undivided attention, which is fine. You know, I just need to get myself in the mood to work on them. Okay. Um, so the next one is land that I love. Teresa Coger. And I know that, um, everybody has stitched this or actually I shouldn't say everybody. I think I've only seen maybe four people that have stitched this. Because again, it is another long one. Um, but I know it came out in 2020. But you know me, always late to the game. Um, so here we go. Land that I love. And I did stitch this on the 35 count tin roof. And this was an arbitrary August start. And if you recall, if you saw anybody that was stitching this, there was a mix up with the fabric because the fabric was stitched on Confederate gray, but the called for in the pattern was tin roof. And I know that Terry from the Cornhusker State Stitchers stitched it on the tin roof. I ordered both fabrics because I didn't know which one I really wanted to do it on. And I did go with the tin roof because I figured, oh, I don't know what else I would stitch on this fabric. Um, it, it's a very unique color. So. That's the star I have. It's up in the left corner, the start of the vine. Um, but Terry was mentioning that when she was stitching this, there is a certain spot in the middle of the pattern where one of the colors so closely resembles the fabric that she changed it out because you couldn't even see it. So obviously I'm not at that point, um, but that's just something that I'm just going to keep in mind, you know, when I do get to that point, um, to be aware of that. Okay, next one is Scottish Door. And this is a pattern by Riolis. And I had wanted to do this because my grandfather was born in Scotland. I don't know if he ever had Scotty dogs. And this pattern, okay, this came as a kit, fully kitted. And the threads are actually woolen threads. So this is my first time stitching with woolen threads and I absolutely love it. Love it. And this is being stitched on 14 count Ada. And I haven't gotten that far on it, just at the top part of the door. Um, but again, I should really get back to this. That's where I am. Four. 
and I do like stitching stitching on this. So this should be a finish. I should make a point of finishing this in 2024. As I say that with all the ones I pull out. All right. So now we're going to the pile that's down here. Hopefully I have these in order. Okay. So the next one is the 2023 Collector's Heart, Heart in Hand. And this is being stitched on 32 count Heartland linen. And here's the pattern. You would think something that small, I could have finished up, right? Uh, and it's just being stitched with, um, it came with this red, it's called Leather Bound and it's Cotton Garden Threads. And I like it. I, the, it came with the fabric and the gloss. Uh, where's my board? Where's my board? And that's where I am. And it's so cute. And actually, I got more done on it than I thought I would. Than I thought I did, but um, nice, nice variegated red. I don't know if you can see that. Definitely looks like um, an old red leather bound book, I think. So, that I should make an attempt to finish up. And that was also an arbitrary August stitch. And next we have the Herb Garden. Herb, herb Garden. Herb Garden. Pronounce that H. The Herb Garden by the Drawn Thread. And I also have the others in this series. There's the summer garden, the kitchen garden, the winter garden, the autumn garden, the spring garden. And I'm thinking, I don't know if I want to do them individually or if I want to do them all in a row on one. I, the, I got a large enough piece of fabric. I mean, this is a yard. And I started it, um, this is 36 count cream Edinburgh linen, um, being stitched with MPIs. So I got all the MPIs and all the patterns, you know, use the same MPIs. And the only thing I hate about this, and this is going to be consistent throughout the other ones too. I don't know if you can see it up close. Do you see this right here, these stitches? Those are all very tiny, almost like back stitches to make those vines and then some of the leaves. And um, it's just been tedious. I got off count, had to rip it out, start all over again. That's my start on it. Nothing great. And I think I've just been procrastinating because I hate stitching these stupid stems. Um, but I like the pattern. I guess I'm just going to have to suck it up, right? Oh. But... Because all of them are like that. All of them have those. So anyway, I mean, and the fabric, like I said, I have a yard of it. So it's big enough that I can stitch all of them on the same piece. I just have to make that decision before I decide on the second one that I'm going to do.
Okay, then we have, oh, this is what I love. Oops, that's not it. Okay, um, now we're getting into Sampler September. Let's start, so I did for Sampler September, and this is called My Little Sampler. And it's by Running With Needles and Scissors. There we go. And it's so sweet. So sweet. And again, I'm doing this one for my granddaughter. And any of these paper copies that you see, um, are just my working copies, you know, because I have the right, you know, the actual, you know, but I, I photocopy because I mark, mark them up with red pen as I go along. Um, and here is, this is being stitched on 28 count bone jobelin that I had in my stash, which is the perfect color for this. It just goes so nicely with the thread colors. And the threads are Gloriana silks, which came with the pattern. Um, and this is how far I got. So not a big start. Um, just the first letters. And then of course, I, I'm, I'm a border person. I try to do the border first whenever I can, just to make sure that I have, you know, enough going across, enough going down the whole bit. Um, so that's how far I got on that one. And that's just so sweet. Such a sweet little sampler. All right, close up. Look out, Foxy. Come here, you want to come say hi? Come here. Come here. Oh, we'll have one dog make an appearance. This is Foxy. She's my Pomeranian. Okay, you're all right, I have you. She's my Pomeranian. Um, all my dogs are rescues. Hi, hi. Um, you know, and they've all had tough lives, you know, either by, she was abused. She was greatly abused, um, by her former owner. She came up from Florida and she's, she's had gone through multiple operations, including having to have her eye removed. Um, you know, she was attacked by another dog, almost, uh, lost her life there. She's had um, her spleen removed. She had cancer in her spleen, has had that removed, came throughout that. And she's my senior. She's probably about, they estimate she's about 15 years old. So, say hi. All right, I'll put you down. So that's one. That's one of my little fur babies here. Um, I'm serious. I was, I was joking with somebody yesterday about everything that she's been through because she just had another operation. Oh, two weeks ago, nothing serious, but she had um, a skin tag on her back that had ruptured. And so it had its own blood supply and it just wouldn't, they finally just had to remove it. They did everything they could to try to correct it. But so anyway, I was joking with someone saying, you know how cats, there could be a comic strip with Foxy and a cat saying the cat saying I have nine lives and Foxy just like hold my beer, you know, like one of these, like you have nothing over me cat. <laughs> but anyway, I digress a little sidetrack there. Okay. So that was my little sampler. Then we have, oh, she's back in her bed. <laughs> Um, Maria Selby Humphrey, 1831, by Blackbird Designs, 
and this one right here. And um, you know what's funny is I remember saying this to you guys before this year, I had never ever stitched a blackbird pattern, and I have three of them in my whips. Oh, this is a big one. Um, so this is being stitched on 32 count French, French, French country mocha linen and all the called for DMCs. I'm not doing this in the silks. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I'm lying. Um, not DMC. It's, um, Gentle Arts. Nice muted colors. Aren't those all pretty? So Gentle Arts. And started the border. <laughs> Oh, it's embarrassing to see some of these. But again, it gives me the motivation to get some work done on them this year. This again was a start for Sampler September. Um, so there we go with that. Oh, then we have, oh, Rose Tree Lane. Another sample of September start, and this is by Country Stitching, and this was a kit. And I love the look of the pattern. I love this border. I love these houses. Shoot, I don't know what thread, what pattern this thread came out of. Oh, well. Um, what I don't like is that it is a printed cross-stitch. What's the pattern? Oh. And unfortunately, the X's on this material do not line up. And I'll show you what I mean with that. Dog hairs. So here's my start on this. And what's driving me crazy, you can see all the white spaces between these X's because the X's are smaller than the squares. So I feel like I'm actually making the X's larger when I stitch them because obviously I'm, I'm covering up the white. Um, it's just driving me crazy. I just don't like having the stitch like that because if you may, it, you have to keep track of it. It's like, okay, so am I stitching the extra length on this row of the white? or this row of the white underneath, because then you have to make sure that you do the same thing continuously. So like if I'm over here, I have to make sure that I'm doing the same thing as I'm doing over here. And then the same thing going down the sides. So it, it's just a pain in the butt. Um, I'm not enjoying this. Not at the point yet of where I'm considering maybe just UFOing it because like I said I do like the finished product um so right now it's just one of those I'm just sucking it up and I'm doing it and we'll see how long I last at doing it Okay, next, season sampler. Oh, 
Oh, we just hit the one hour mark, guys. So sorry. Um, season Sampler by Margaret and Margaret. And it's this one. These, these two are both the same. Um, get in close on that. And this is just um, a time to every purpose under the heaven, um, which is, you know, like that old song for every season. I think it was sung by Mamas and Papas, maybe. And this is being stitched on 28 count vintage country mocha. Oh, geez. Another humongous start. That's a damn good looking strawberry, though. I'll say that. Hmm. Oh, and this was started for Sampler September. And that's not a very difficult stitch. I'll have to get back to that one too. Oh, the next one, my favorite, one of my favorites. One of my favorites. One of my favorites. Oh, there goes my stack. My pile just fell over. Darn it. Okay, Huckleberry Farm by the Blue Flower. Love this. Love, love, love this. And this is being stitched on the called for linen 32 count shale by Picture This Plus. And with the called for colors not that i've gotten very far to even consider changing something out blah 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 okay and we have some beautiful little leaves i love look at this can you see the modeling on the back of this Love, love the color of this. I was kind of uncertain at first. I thought it, it was too purpley, um, but it's like a purplish brown. So, unfortunately, I mean, this was another sample of September start. Um, but unfortunately, unless I really work this into a rotation, I don't really see myself getting much work on this this year. Um, again, we're going to have to devise a plan. Next is So next is do 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 Summer Quaker by Lila's Leela Studio. Love it. Love, love, love this one too. And I know that everybody was stitching on this this summer. There was a sale going on. In fact, there was probably more than one sale going on. Um, and I'm stitching this on 40 count old Massachusetts. So now I'm up to 40 count. Well, I think one of my other ones was 40 count too, right? I can't remember. But guys, all these new things that I've done this year as a stitcher, stitching for the first time on linen, stitching for the first time on anything above, I would say maybe I had stitched on 25 count, but I mean, I'm up to 40 count on linen. And if you remember before my birthday start, 
I was having like a breakdown because I couldn't decide whether I wanted to do and a four screw um oh it's escaping me now land that I love and there was another one maybe it was Huckleberry Farm what's Huckleberry Farm no it's 32 count but remember I was like I can't stitch on 36 count you know I can't stitch on 40 count and now look at here I am I don't know what I was freaking out about. But anyway, here is my start on Summer Quaker. Isn't that pretty? Oh, wait till you see what I have coming up. This is another one I really need to get back to. I love this fabric. Old Massachusetts is the perfect fabric for this. Um, just because I look at this pattern and I picture Cape Cod, I picture Massachusetts, you know, the lighthouse, the whale, even the mermaid, you know, sure. We have mermaids in Massachusetts, right? Um, all over the place, anywhere there's water, but I just love this. I really need to get back to this. And then we have oh, the Lebanon house sampler. Okay, now I was very fortunate enough to get one of the Lebanon House bags. This was stitched by or sewn by um, Shelly from Antique Needleworkers, dog hair. And she stitched these exclusively for the 25th anniversary um, for keepsakes and it's so cute because this is the bag this gingham bag is what keepsakes uses so Shelly stitch project bags and has a matching little notion pouch so adorable Lily stop it and it came with this pattern, it was a combo. So I was very fortunate to be able to um, get one of these. And so I keep my Lebanon house pattern in here. Now this is, this was produced for keepsakes, specifically by Rosewood Manor. And it was in honor of their 25th anniversary. And this was a stitch along. Um, I believe it started in June. And I didn't get very far. I don't think Shelly finished hers either. Or um, who else was doing this? Liz was stitching this. So I think um, I know that Barb, the owner of Keepsake, she finished hers. So this is being stitched on the called for Peaks Dye Works 30 count gold linen and it's all Weeks Dye Works flosses. Oh, that's a freaking mess, isn't it? How did that even happen? Oh, because it's twisted like all right, so here are the week style works flosses. Quite a variety. And let's see where I got on this. Oh, another border. Another border. So I actually let's pull this this way so I can see. So I actually got two of the rings done and then I just went across and did the dots all the way across. Oh, goodness. And as you can see, that's what's going on up here at the top. So I was doing that border first. And this was another sampler September start. Okay. 
next is Margaret Beatty. And these are all, um, we're into my sampler. All, the, all these are my sampler September starts. So Margaret Beatty. I had had this one kitted up for over a year, so I finally pulled it out to start it during September. And this is being stitched on 32 count light cocky with all the call 14 on the C's. And yes, I started the border. Woohoo! A lot of work involved in that border. Um, so obviously that needs some more work and attention. Next is Agnes Platts. The Blackbird. Um, and this is the Strawberry Sampler. This one down here. It's very faint. Very faint because obviously that's I think that's the original. Um, but this is being stitched on 32 count gray linen by Weeks Dye Works with the called for gentle arts. And border. Now, the funny thing about this one when I did this border, okay, I'm stitching across, stitching across, stitching across, and I'm at the end of my fabric. And on the pattern, it's showing that's the middle point, the midpoint. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how can that be the midpoint? I'm at the end of the fabric. Well, another bonehead start where I had the fabric turn the wrong way and I had started in the wrong spot so thankfully that border going across now became the border going down <laughs> so I did I was able to turn it and now I will go back and do the border across this across the top but I think I did that on three patterns this year where I just wasn't paying attention had the cloth in the wrong you know horizontal vertical going the wrong way and I started the wrong way so again back that up to a bonehead move so the last one for this bag is, or this pile I should say is come on Martha Martha Evans by the Scarlet House. This was supposed to be a January stitch along, January of last year, not this year. January stitch along in honor of Brenda from Brenda and the Serial Starter, her 60th birthday, I believe. And I didn't start it till September. Late to the party as usual. And this is how much I got started on that. Which I actually like that little motif. So just need to, and this is being stitched on 40 count. Winter White with the DMC conversion. I think this was um, called for, I want to say it was called for silks. Um, let me see. Yes, it was called for the um, 
the 100 point threes, um, but I did not want to order all those silks. So I just did the DMC conversion. All right, stop that. Done. Whoops. All right, getting there, guys. Getting there. Now we're moving into the more recent Christmas kit. So first of all is my December Sal, um, Dreaming of a White Christmas by Luca S. And this was a kitted project. Um, and I actually talked about this in my last video, some of the changes I'm going to make. Too much white. Too much white. And I did get some more into this. Um, and again, I'm continuing with the stair railings. Oops. So all the shadowing in between the stair rails. So I might work on that tonight and tomorrow maybe and um, I am planning to continue working on this I think throughout 2024 because it's a long it's a long stitch and um, I really would like to get as much done on it as possible just because I've had this kit forever I've had this kit probably since it first came out and I don't know when it came out but I've had it for a long time and the kitted fabric is 18 count white Ada. And then we have No Days. Whoops, by Maricalia. My big moose needle minder there. There we go, Mr. Snowman. And this is being stitched on 32 count natural linen um, with DMC and a few of the water lily silks. Oh, they're so soft, so soft. I have to say, I haven't stitched with these yet, but just the feel of them, I think these are the softest silks, even softer than MPI, and I love MPI. Okay, so if you saw my last video when I showed this, whoops, is that inside out? Yes, it is. I had done the same thing. I had stitched this. I had started in the wrong corner of the fabric. I had stitched this. I mean, this isn't even complete on the second time around. This tree was all filled in. I had the border all the way around. I had started stitching out towards the rest of the border and then realized I had started in the wrong corner of the fabric. So I thought, well, maybe I can just turn it, you know, like I did for the blackbird, you know, because it's the border going down. But when you turn it, the tree is sideways it wasn't right side up. So I couldn't save it. I had to rip it all out, start again. And I just need to start paying attention. Um, so that is no days. And then next is Ice Blossom. And of course, these are all the ones that I started for the 25 days of Christmas. I did not get 25 started, but I got a decent number started. And this is a Just Nan Ice Blossom. Wow, that's three Just Nan period patterns that I did this year that I started. That's crazy. 
And this is the one that I was having all the problems with because of this linen. Um, this is being stitched on 28 count smoky pearl cashew linen. And these satin stitches, the, the fabric is too loose. The weave in the fabric is too loose. So these stitches were like really pulling the fabric a lot. So I had to find a good balance because if you leave your satin stitches too loose, then they don't look right. Um, and pulling them too tight was bunching up the fabric. Um, so it took me a lot. I had to pull that sucker out four times to get it to sit correctly and look okay in what I was doing with the stitching. It was a royal pain in the butt. Um, so that one will be put away until Christmas in July, probably. I'll pull it out again. Um, then we have Winter's Peace. And this is by Artful Offerings. And this is being stitched on 36 count antique white Edinburgh linen um, with Gentle Arts. And as you recall, if you saw the video that I showed this, um, so I got the top part of the banner started. And then I had my little incident with my red wine where I was drinking wine and my phone rang and my brain wasn't functioning correctly and tried to talk before I had swallowed and the wine came spurting out of my mouth onto my white fabric. Now, fortunately, the pattern has these little star and I'm just going to cover up those spots with these little stars. So I did not want to start it over again. And uh, <laughs> that was dumb. Live and learn, right? We all know that we're supposed to wash our hands, have clean hands, don't have food or drink around our patterns, and yet we always do, right? Okay. And then we have my third blackbird, guys. So that's three Just Nans, three Blackbirds. That's crazy. How many? Three Rosewood Manors. I guess you can tell my taste. Um, so this is the Blackbird that I'm stitching. Everybody's done this. I know, tis the season. It's being stitched on 32 count raw Belfast linen. And remember this one, I couldn't choose which fabric I wanted to use. And then I did end up going with the raw and I'm happy with it. I think that the colors are going to look really nice on it. Um, and I just started the leaf that's by his beak. So I don't have a very strong start on this one, um, but that's okay. This one will also get pulled out again in July. unless I do work out some type of seasonal rotation where I'm stitching, you know, the season six months in advance. Well, that would be July, right? Um, then we have Oops. Penguin Pear by Hands On Design. Love this. Love penguins. Love penguins. And this is the first ornament I've ever done. Not that it's finished, but that I've worked on. And this is being stitched on 32 count Stormy Sea, which I think is beautiful. The perfect fabric, which is by Fabric Flair um, with Classic Colorworks colors. 
And I started at the bottom. And this is just the bottom of his of their feet. Well, what they're standing on. They're a little iceberg. So I just love this fabric. It's going to be perfect. And there's a whole series of these ornaments done by hands on design. So I, I definitely have, you know, enough fabric to do many of them. So that'll be fun. Um, the next we have Merry Christmas. Now, this is also done by Country Stitching, the printed fabric that I'm actually hating doing because the X's are all off. This one is the exact opposite. The X's are fine. That's the pattern. And again, these patterns from Country Stitching, I don't, there's no um, copyright date on them, but I've had these a long time. I've, I've had these 80s, the 90s. So that's why I you know, decided to stitch them up and get them over and done with and out of the way. Um, and this one, like I said, it, it's coming out fine. There's no spaces between the X's like in the other one. So as you can see, all the X's touch. There's no white lines in between them. And this red is beautiful, this burgundy. So this one, I'm enjoying stitching. It's just been a problem with the, I don't know, the printing on the other one. So anyway, um, and that's just a, that came as a kit, obviously with the fabric and with the floss included. Okay. So another Marabilia. So this must be my third Nora Corbett. Yeah. Because I have the letter A by Nora Corbett. Then I have Snow Days and this one is Santa's sleigh. Under the Mirabilia. Oh no, this is Nora Colbert. Um, and this is being stitched on 32 count twilight blue, the same twilight blue that Ice Blossom from Just Nan is being stitched on. And this one for this pattern is fine. For the other one, I don't know what the problem is. Well, like I said, it's it's just too loose. So with DMCs and of course the Crinix and the um, Mill Hill beads and this is what I've gotten started on this. These are just the packages the start of the packages in the back of the sleigh. So not too far along on that one. But it, you know even though I haven't gotten too far on a lot of these I'm glad that I at least got the start on them. Because a lot of these have been sitting around kitted up for over a year. Um, so I'm, I'm just happy that I, I got the start. And then we have... My Merry Moose. And I showed this to you in my last video. Where... I have my moose. You can see his outline of his head. And I'm off by a row on this right here. It's supposed to be up one. So I gotta rip that out and redo that. But that shouldn't be too hard. I should just finish this one up. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Maybe I'll just finish this one. Um and that's my first mill hill. A lot of first this year. Okay, so in my last video, I had shown my nativity sampler, 
and the dilemma with the two greens, right? And here's that pattern. And this is by Margaret and Margaret. Um, guys, I'm sorry if I'm bobbing up and down. I just realized that like I'm twitching my leg and it may be causing the camera to go up and down. So I apologize for that. So I did decide to go with the called for green. I did not like the green that I had tried switching to. Um, and I got that started. So that's just the outline border of the vine. And there's going to be flowers in there. And I know you can't see it, but when you when you look at it, I think the green looks okay. Um, it's going to have to be, right? I made the decision. I made the decision. And that's being stitched on the 28 count arboreal from Cedar Rivers, which I love. Love, love. Okay, we're almost done, guys. We're getting down to the finale. And these are my Christmas Day starts. So the first one is... So excited for this. The Snow Queen by Mirabilia. Do you know that it took me forever to track down all the beads for this? Because 123 Stitch only had a certain amount in stock that they sent with the kit. And the other beads are actually out of production. And I really had to overpay to get those and I wanted to get the call for beads because again I'm not used to stitching Mirabilia and I wanted it to be as close to the real thing as possible um, so this I'm stitching with DMC and I'm stitching it on that 28 count printed fabric by Fabric Flare and I'm loving this, guys. I am loving this. So this is the start that I got. This is his hoof going up to his leg. Um, I'm very excited. I, I'm going to continue. This one I am going to pull out every month in a rotation. Um, this one and the Christmas Quaker because these are large projects and I do want to be working on them throughout the year. So love, love working on that. I'm going to be so happy to continue working on that throughout the year. And then the second one is Christmas Quaker 2 or I think it's Quaker Christmas 2. By Bygone Stitches, and I'm stitching this on a 32 count white Lugana using all silky threads. Um, Sherry, the color cross stitcher, had stitched this, and she had stitched on the silky, and she sends it all kitted with the silkies and everything um, because it was just such. She said it was such nice coverage, and she's right. I Look at this is what I did. Going down the side and then coming back up to do this first Quaker motif. Isn't that pretty? I love it. I love it. Um, so yeah, my two Christmas starts, those will continue throughout the year. Those will be in a regular rotation. And that's it. Whip Parade for 2023. How many did I have? I had 39, counting my two oldest whips. So 39 whips. Like I said, I don't think that's bad. I think that's kind of average. And so some of those will continue to be in a rotation for 2024. And I will have those 
all listed out in my plans, my next video for plans for 2024. So thanks for joining me. We're at an hour and 35 minutes. And so like I said, I will have a plans for 2024 video coming out next. And then the next time I see you will be in the new year. So have a safe weekend, have a safe and happy new year. And as always, happy stitching. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.